Hi everyone, this will be a short video to talk through some of the proofs regarding kites and also mid-segments. So let's start with the definition first for a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of congruent adjacent sides. So here's a picture on the right and you can see the geometric kite is uh, pretty much the same as what you'd expect from um, picturing the, the toy a kite. Um, so by distinct pairs of congruent adjacent sides, um, we mean that they are not all for the same length, right? So we do have two pairs, right? So here, um, AB and AD would be the same length, and then BC and CD would be the same length. Um, but for instance, AB would be a different length than BC. Okay. Now, if all four were the same, and that would be a different shape that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, that would be a, a rhombus, or what you would typically think of as a diamond shape. All right, so that's the definition. And if we intuitively try to say something about the angles, so if you um, take a look at this figure, right, um, notice that the ones across from each other, right, these two seem to be the same. And... Um, you might also suspect that A and C are the same. I'm not sure um, if you would see that from the diagram. So um, just some of the conclusions you might draw. Um, maybe notice something about whether they're acute or obtuse, right? Or you could picture um, maybe a kite where if we stretch these out, uh, maybe we would get, um, you know, some, some obtuse angles as well. All right, so... Let's actually prove some facts um, about kites. So the first one, in a kite, one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So it turns out, in this figure that we've already seen, angles B and D are congruent to each other. Okay, so how do we go about proving this? Um, well, you, you may see it already. Um, this is based on triangle congruence proofs, um, similar to ones we did for parallelograms. All right, so the first thing we need to do is construct a C. Construct a C. And then our strategy is going to be to, to prove that those two halves of the kite, those two triangular halves, are congruent. All right, so we, we almost have it. Um, so we're given, let's see. And then I guess you could fill this in to do a paragraph proof. You need to make complete sentences out of this. Okay, but so we could say something like we are given the fact that AB is congruent to AD and BC is congruent to DC. Right? And then we also know that AC is congruent to itself. by the reflexive property of congruence, or you could say, I think your textbook calls it identity. All right, and so now what do we have? Well, we have those two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. And then we can jump right to our conclusion. So therefore, angle B is congruent to angle D. And what's the reason? That's CPCTC. All right, so could both pairs of opposite angles be congruent? So we've just proved that in a kite that B and D are, or in other words, uh, these are the angles formed by um, one each of those two uh, pairs of congruent sides. Okay, so the the sides um, of B and D are not congruent to each other. All right, how about the other ones? How about the angles that are between two pairs of congruent sides? Could those be congruent to each other? All right, well, I'm going to leave this proof for you to do um, as a homework exercise, but I can at least get you started on this. So um, go ahead and assume that, that B and D are congruent because we just proved that. Right? 
And if you want to pick up where we left off with diagonal AC already in there and the triangle's already congruent, um, you can assume or just state all of that by our previous proof. All right. Um, so then prove that angle A and C, well, they actually can't be congruent. Right? Um, so I would suggest doing this using an indirect proof. Right? So go ahead and assume everything that we've proved so far. Um, B is congruent to D, the triangles are congruent, all of that. And then also suppose that angle A is congruent to angle C. Right? and then try to find a contradiction. Right. So um, another hint, you may want to sort of back up and erase this diagonal and instead just look at the sides and angles in this kite and see if you can find a contradiction that way. All right. So remember, um, to find a contradiction, you can either get all the way to the end and then contradict this statement that A and C are congruent or your contradiction could just be about any fact. So you can contradict a definition or um, something else that we've already assumed. Um, your contradiction might be if you show that, that B and D are not congruent because we know that they are. All right, so any contradiction at all. All right, see what you can do with that. And then the other thing that we need to talk about is mid-segments. All right, so the definition of a mid-segment um, and now this, I don't think it's actually given in your textbook, so you may want to, to sort of jot this down. Um, but this first part of the theorem is also the definition of a mid-segment. So it's a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. Right? So every triangle has um, three mid-segments. So in triangle ABC here, we see one of them. Um, I could also draw in the two others. Okay, this would be a mid-segment. Uh, let's make this like L or something, All right? Say L is the midpoint of BC, then that would be a mid-segment. And then ML is also a mid-segment. So a lot of times we'll talk about a mid-segment respective to a base. Okay, so we would say that MN is the midpoint or the mid-segment um, respective to side BC. Right? And then that lets you know it's sort of um, not intersecting it or... Uh, well, well, it turns out we'll, we'll show that it's parallel to it. Okay, so here's our mid-segment theorem. Um, and this one says that the mid-segment of a triangle or, or the segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side, right, so the one that it's um, obviously not intersecting, and has a length equal to one-half the length of the third side. So in, in this given figure, we've got triangle ABC, and we're going to assume M and N are midpoints of AB and AC, respectively. And the first part of this proof is to show that MN is parallel to BC. And then the second part is to show that MN, the distance, is half the length of BC. Right. So the second part is left for you as an exercise in this section, um, but you should be able to get a pretty good start on this um, by, by looking at this proof. All right, so we're gonna use an auxiliary line to help with this proof. So let's talk about um, you know, how, we can, how we can justify this. So the one that we wanna draw is this line, CE, and we're gonna construct CE parallel to a, B. Okay, so C, E parallel to B, E. Okay, so I'm going to let you go, go back and uh, fill in some of these reasons. So um, what's our reason? Why can we construct a line um, through a point parallel to a, a line um, that doesn't go through that point? Okay, so look for a postulate or a theorem that says that. Now the second thing we want to do is label this point D, All right? And um, in order for this proof to work, we actually need um, we need D to be the point where this segment MN, if we were to extend it, um, crosses line CE. 
Okay, so there's a, a couple reasons we can use for this. Um, one of them is that we're allowed to um, extend lines, okay, or we can extend or, or you know, uh, finish drawing the rest of line MN, right? And then this, the second reason isn't really in the textbook, but um, I did mention it briefly in class. Um, we know that a line that meets one of two parallel lines also meets the other one. So your, your reason for that, we might call it a lemma, like a helping thing. And I think I, I briefly sketched out the outline of a proof for that in class, um, but it would be a really quick uh, proof by contradiction if you wanted to, to show that that's a, a true fact. All right, so once again, um, the statement is a, a line that meets one of two parallel lines. Okay, so this line MN that meets one of two parallel lines, it meets AB will also meet, it's going to come across and intersect this other parallel line, the one that's parallel to AB, okay, and that's CE. Okay, so we've established all of that, um, and then I'm just going to say it this way, let's say that line MN intersects line CE at point D. Okay, and we can just call it whatever we want. So we, we um, made up point D. Okay, so that's the setup. And then actually the proof itself is, is pretty easy from here. So we're going to use um, what we know about um, angles and parallel lines. And again, we're going to use um, triangle congruence proofs to try to prove um, that N MN is parallel to BC. So first of all, let's um, let's use the the angles that are given and labeled here, right? And since we know that um, CE and BE are, uh, let's see here, did I label that wrong? I think I did. CE is parallel to either BM or BA. Okay, that would make a little more sense. Okay, so CE parallel to BA, um, then notice that right, AC is a transversal right, between two parallel lines, so then we would know that 2 and 1 are congruent. And again, I'll let you look up the reason for that, or you can um, see the example in the textbook. And then if we think of MD as the transversal, okay, and here's the parallel lines, then we have 3 and 4 are congruent as well. Okay, so angle 1 is congruent to 2, 3 is congruent to 4. All right, um, other things to notice. We know that M and N are the midpoints of AB and AC. Okay, so we know AM is congruent to MB, and then we know that AN might be a different length, but whatever that is, it's congruent to NC. All right, so that's enough there, and let's um, focus specifically right now on AN and NC. So those are congruent. And then that gives you enough to um, show that these two little triangles are congruent by angle-angle side. Okay, so we would have um, triangle AMN is congruent to triangle CDN. And then once we know that, uh, let's see, we know that, um, let's see, corresponding parts are congruent, so we would now know that CD and AM correspond, so they're the same length. Okay, so I'm going to start over here, so CD is congruent to AM. Right. And then notice AM we already showed is congruent to MB, so we can use the transitive property to then say that BM is congruent to CD. Right. Um, and I, I didn't write this out down, this is just a sketch, so 
Um, you should have put these symbols into words as well, actually state that AM is congruent to MB and so forth. Okay, so, um, all right, so now what do we know? Well, we know that, um, that BM and CD are congruent, and since they're line segments on uh, parallel lines, we also know that they're parallel. So BM is parallel to CD. All right, we know that. Um, so then what can we conclude about this shape? I'll put this one in red. Okay, it's got two opposite sides, which are congruent and parallel. So that should sound familiar. So that would mean that that, sh that figure is a parallelogram. Okay, so let me erase some of this. Okay, so BCDM is a parallelogram. And then, well, what do we know about parallelograms? Well, we also know that um, their opposite sides are parallel. So now we can conclude that MD um, is parallel to BC. Right? And then that implies that MN, which is a part of, of, seg or of, um, of segment MD, okay, so MN is also parallel to BC. All right, so you can work from here to get the rest of the proof. Um, it's not too many more steps to show that MN is, is half the length of BC. All right, so go ahead and use um, all of the things that we've established. And if you do need to see the, the complete details for this proof, um, see the example in the textbook, and they walk through and give you all of the, the steps and reasons um, for this one. Okay, so that's it for this video. So we've got um, kites. And just to summarize again, they have two distinct pairs of congruent adjacent sides. All right, and that's the definition of a kite. And then we have mid segments. And um, the important things are the, the fact that they're parallel to the third side and half the length.